My name is Vasumati In October 1993, approximately 80 like-minded individuals working in healthcare around the world gathered at the Summertown Pavilion on Middle Way in Oxford, UK. We wrote as late as July, inviting people to come to what we called a first colloquium in October. And we didn't promise them any travel. We said we'd give them sandwiches and coffee, but that was it. They'd have to find the funds. And they came from all over the world. It was organized in, a, in, in a, quite a rush. And uh, there was a lot of people from all over the place, not quite knowing what, was, what it was all about, and, and, but all anxious to move forward. And it was, a very, it was a very energizing and powerful meeting. For two days, the group discussed how they should organize the working structure for what would become the Cochrane Collaboration, an international effort to improve healthcare by finding and promoting the best possible scientific evidence. To understand what kind of evidence was under discussion, we need to go back 20 years earlier in the career of the man who brought the group together, Ian Chalmers. I had worked as a clinician in places where all the time there were questions coming up about what is the right treatment. And this included in this country, in the UK, but also in the Gaza Strip. Working in a Palestinian refugee camp, Ian observed that interventions he was taught in medical school probably caused unnecessary suffering. People had um, a variety of opinions about how to treat particular circumstances. And you had to ask the question, who was right? Now, I didn't know how to go about judging who was right. My training at medical school hadn't left me with any tools um, with which to investigate that possibility. So when I came back from the Middle East, I read a book by someone I hadn't heard of up until then called Archie Cochrane, Defectiveness and Efficiency, Random Reflections on Health Services. He asked the question, how can we have a, a rational health service if we don't know which of the things being done within it are useful and which are, are useless or possibly even harmful? In his book, Archie Cochrane drew attention to randomized trials. I'd never heard of randomized trials. I'd been six years qualified. I'd never heard of it. And so I started to look into this. And basically, it was like getting a compass in a jungle of uh, conflicting, incompatible clinical opinions about how to practice. And so that started me on the trail of looking for um, reports of these studies in the field which I had chosen to work in, which was obstetrics. Starting around 1974, and for the next 10 years, Ian and a team of about 100 people would search out relevant reports of randomized trials in obstetrics. Also, looking at the possibility of analyzing similar studies together so that one can start to address the way that you're misled by the play of chance. Now, I didn't know that round about that time, Gene Glass named that process meta-analysis. But in fact, that's what I was describing in this out outline proposal for this work. And whereas other people were doing it for specific treatments, we were completely mad and ambitious and decided we ought to try to do it for all of a, a specialty, for the whole of obstetrics. This work culminated in a two-volume, 1,300-page publication, as well as a paperback for consumers to give them access to this research. I was a member of the National Childbirth Trust, and I remember Ian Chalmers coming to give a presentation. And I remember very clearly being aghast because th this presentation was about a review that showed a particular suture material causing more painful intercourse for women three months after to birth, and yet he said lots of hospitals were still using it, and I was just incensed, really. We realized that the books would be out of date when they were published, all books are, so we started publishing electronically 
1988, it was called the Oxford Database of Perinatal Trials, it was that electronic publishing vision that made it possible to conceptualize what the Cochrane collaboration might do if there was sufficient support for it. I remember the editorial in the British Medical Journal calling for people to collaborate. And I was in a hotel room in Lahore and wrote to Ian saying it was very important that, that this initiative that he was setting up, the Cochrane Centre as it was then, uh, included problems from developing countries and people from developing countries in the process because sometimes both of those um, get forgotten. We left people in no doubt at all that if this was going to be done it needed international collaboration. We'd uh, demonstrated with the model of the perinatal uh, work that it was possible to do it. Our job was to facilitate. So if that facilitation was going to happen we needed to get in touch with all of our allies around the world and to say, are you up for this? Many doctors were resistant to the idea that you could combine the evidence from different trials that address the same question. They were all saying, our trial is special. You can't combine it with any other trial. Nobody knew what a systematic review was. And in fact, they were kind of distrustful. It's like, well, you didn't do any research, you just read some studies. When we did our first review, I wasn't able to convince very many people to stop using antibiotics based on a Cochrane review. Whereas now, as I say, they, it's part of the quality criteria. What has changed over the last 20, 30 years is the recognition that um, you can usefully combine uh, trials that have addressed the same or similar questions to work out w whether or not treatments work. It was actually all about, you know, only using interventions when they were effective, and it proved that a lot of the routine interventions that had been around before actually just didn't work or had adverse effects, and so they eventually were stopped. Routine shaves, routine enema, routine episiotomy, they're all gone now. Within, I think, about a year, we'd found 400,000 um, trials that had been in Medline but had not been indexed. And there was the equivalent of billions of dollars of worth of research that you couldn't find. So the best search in the world could only find 13,148 trials when there was probably at that time 350,000, 400,000 trials in Medline, but just unfindable. And there also been for many years concern that not all trials are published. And so how do we find trials period uh, that have been initiated. And so there had been a group working over the years saying we really need trials registration, but to be honest, it's always been a small group, you know, academics saying these things in print but didn't really get anywhere. And I think Cochrane's being behind trials registration and amassing a really large and meaningful register of published trials itself made a difference that we now have trial registration worldwide. So for me, one of the most important things we've done has had to do with getting all the clinical trials in one place. Clinical practice guidelines were relatively novel in the early 90s, and now um, we're doing an exercise within the stroke group. All the Western clinical practice guidelines are similar, and they've all referenced Cochrane reviews in a large numbers. And so the, it's become kind of embedded in in the, the normal practice of, of quality improvement. When I go to meeting, international meetings on obstetrics and gynaecology, without a doubt, people are quoting Cochrane Reviews, probably in every presentation on evidence or what's best practice or guidelines. Have I seen in the last 20 years as to whether people with schizophrenia are getting better care? Yes, I think I have. It has a huge journey yet to go, enormous, and um, uh, but what didn't used to be there is accessible evidence that can be used either by policymakers or people with schizophrenia themselves, or the clinicians, the busy clinician. We established the South African Cochrane Centre. We made it a, a very clear goal that we would prioritise the conditions that are important uh, to, to Africa. We worked very closely with the collaborative review groups. 
we have together uh, been able to substantially increase the number of reviews that are relevant to Africa. One of the major achievement has been to convince people that really accumulating evidence is essential. This was very much Archie Cochrane message. I think that when Cochrane said that evidence about healthcare should be brought together and synthesized so that all the evidence would be available. Now it seems to us obvious, but actually at the time it wasn't at all obvious. And this was a new idea that Cochrane was delivering that was in a way a challenge to the medical profession. Get on and do this. I realized that being a doctor, I could help one patient at a time, but by joining the Cochrane Collaboration, I could help tens of thousands of patients at a time by doing a Cochrane Review.